fasting in general is renowned for its propensity to shape behavior and alter the lot and destinies of believers in very positive ways. And this sublime precept is applicable in both Islam and Christianity. In fact, religious scholars argue that one of the hallmarks of the acceptance of religious deeds in the holy month of Ramadan is positive attitudinal change and a tendency for pious deeds and fear of Allah. Therefore, the questions we need to ask ourselves, among others, are, have we emerged from Ramadan cleansed and purified by ridding ourselves of all sinful habits of the past to lead better and righteous lives acceptable in the sight of the Almighty Allah? Are we committed or redevoted to leading our lives within the prescriptions of the Holy Quran, which commands us to lead decent lives? The responses to such questions within our inner being will give each one of us an indication of how sincere and faithful to Allah we are, how repentant we are, and how inclined we are to changing for the better. Fellow Gambians and Muslims the world over, distinguished viewers, the lesson to draw is that faith in the Almighty Allah and religious commitment are characterized by self-discipline Discipline that emanates consciously from the inner being and not driven by fear of some secular force. This is the true seed of discipline that is lacking in society, both in the Gambia and elsewhere. To comment on indiscipline, Gambians have witnessed in recent times an undesirable and unwarranted escalation of such dreadful crimes as murder, armed robbery, burglary, and alarmingly, kidnapping to cite a few examples. These are crimes that were hitherto unknown in the Gambia, but they have found their way into the Gambian society. While we admit that most of these acts are perpetrated by non-Gambians, Gambians have either been accomplices or have also engaged in these dreadful crimes. There are increasing episodes of infanticide as well as homicide committed by husbands against their wives and children against their parents. These are heinous crimes and wholly unacceptable, especially in a nation where over 90% of the population claim to be practicing Muslims and believers in the Almighty Allah. My government will never condone acts that endanger the fabric of our society or thwart the people's development efforts. Our objective is to create a peaceful, happy, and crime-free nation where the standard of living will be excellent for all citizenry. Thus, banditry, drug trafficking, or its illicit use, homosexuality, murder, terrorism, and other subversive activities against either the state or the people will not be tolerated and government will take whatever legal action is necessary to expunge these deadly and heinous acts from the country. Critically though, the people have to rally behind government and support the relevant state apparatus. It is only genuine patriotism which is embedded in the real fear of Allah and love for the nation as well as true passion for the people and what they stand for. That will salvage us together. Hence, together, 
we must ensure that we do not only abide by the laws of the land, but also compel the criminals in our midst to retract permanently or amend their ways. There is no other option. The security forces and the judicial system will continue to be empowered to enforce the law where applicable. All those guilty of serious crimes and are condemned will face the full force of the law. All punishments prescribed by law will be maintained in the country to ensure that criminals get what they deserve. That is, that those who kill are killed and those who deserve to be put away from society are put away according to the dictates of the law. By the middle of next month, all the death sentences would have been carried out to the letter. There is no way my government would allow 99% of the population to be held to ransom by criminals. Fellow Gambians, distinguished viewers, Muslims the world over. We need not look far into history to be forewarned of the consequences of anarchy. The breakdown of law and order and the resultant atrocities in Mali, Syria, Somalia, and other countries as examples provide sufficient instruction to remind us that crime begets chaos, destruction, and destitution, and in consequence, should be nipped in the bud whenever it emerges. Gambians should look into the future with optimism, encouraged by the rapid rate of development and the tremendous achievements made in less than two decades. We ought to be optimistic of the feasibility of the Gambia's transformation into an economic superpower, and therefore commit ourselves to attaining the development vision and objectives set for such transformation. Let us cruise towards our destiny on the third and leave no room for retrogressive vermins to clog the wheel of rapid progress. We as a state will stand by our sacred duties of making sure that every law-abiding human being in this nation of ours lives in absolute peace security, and freedom. On reflection, one is compelled to observe that we claim and pride ourselves of being Muslims and Christians. But how devoted are we as Muslims and Christians? How many Gambians live by the noble teachings of the holy books? We are taught to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, just as we are taught that love for one's country is an element of piety. Do we manifest these teachings in our day-to-day -day lives? Have we not been admonished to repel hate and injustice? But how many Gambians are willing to expose the criminals in our midst to put an end to the insecurity, injustice, and mayhem that those criminals perpetrate against innocent people. Fellow Gambians and Muslims the world over, distinguished viewers, as we mark the end of Ramadan, this should be a moment of reflection and rededication to the principles and values propagated by Islam and similarly by Christianity. True believers stand steadfast in enjoining and doing good while prohibiting and refraining from evil. I implore you all to stand firm in defense of our communities against crime. Let me re-echo the need for community watch groups to complement Operation Bulldozer. It is long overdue for all of us to mobilize our resources, muster our energies, and innovate to build a progressive, secured, and peaceful nation for all. In the thick of this, 